Bear Reinhardt from Need to Breathe is here. How you doing, Bear? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the show. Man, I love this new record, Forever on Your Side. We're playing the title track to it on Way FM. I just have one problem with it. I got to the end of it, and I wanted more of it. <laughs> I think yeah. that's a good thing, right? Isn't that I what think you that's wanted? supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I wish there was like 10 songs on this one, not Thanks, just four. Man. Thanks, Yeah, man. it's really killer. Yeah, it was it was interesting how it came about. I mean, what we were trying to make a record, I think, and we got in there and was like, we kind of have half a record, and um, but we really felt like we wanted to put the songs out now and not wait. Yeah, um, and so that's it's been cool to see it kind of come out. Like this is the fastest like from record time to the record coming out that I think we've ever done. Um, how long was it? Uh, not very long, a couple months. Like okay. when we played it, got it mixed, and then it's like we're, let's just put it out. Yeah, you know? um, which is awesome for a band because normally it's like a year. You know, you make the mm-hmm. record, you got, you're got sitting on it and people haven't heard it. So I feel like it's been like more fun for us. You know, these songs just, we just heard them and now everybody else gets to hear them too. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So you went to Fort Worth, Texas to record this and mm-hmm. a lot of your other records have been done, like your hometown, some of them in Nashville. Why Fort Worth this time? There was a record uh, or a studio that these guys um, made a record for this artist called Leon Bridges that we really like. And we also just wanted to change the scenery. You know, I, yeah. I think a, cha- a different challenge. It was a very old school studio, like live take kind of like, you know, do stuff to tape and all that. So we just were like, let's go down there and see what happens. Yeah. Um, and we actually recorded a bunch of songs, some of which will be on the next album. OK. Um, right on. But I had a great experience. Yeah. So I always love to ask, like, where songs start out from. So Forever On Your Side, the one we're playing on Way FM. Where did that begin? Was it something you sang into your phone? Was it a napkin? Was it a notebook? Yeah, it's crazy. That's probably the song that we've had the longest that we haven't like finished. Uh-huh. And yeah, we had a couple of voice memos that had gone back and forth between me and my brother. It was a sound check, and we had that sort of line for everyone on your side and the, the melody of the chorus for the longest time. Um, and then we've been doing these mountain houses where we go and kind of get away and write yeah. for records. And, and um, we brought it up, and within like an hour there was a song. Um, and it was cool because it felt a little bit like we could have written it 10 years ago mm-hmm. and we sort of updated it a little bit. So you've literally been sitting on it that long? I bet five or six years probably. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, and that's not unusual because like our voice memo thing, you know, it's like we have, we play a voice memo roulette game <laughs> okay. where if you're in, in there with other songwriters, you kind of go, you just scroll down through your voice memos and, and you have to play whatever it lands on. All right. Uh, All right. Totally that's embarrassing situation. Because um, most of our voice memos are in like a back of a car humming some ridiculous <laughs> right. melody. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. The life of uh, recording songs is it usually starts out on your phone. Like you would uh, talk to Siri or drop it in your phone, like a voice memo or whatever. Yeah. I, I think I send about a thousand voice memos to my brother to oh listen my gosh. to when we go in to write songs. Wow. So we both kind of just pass that along. And then and then if something sparks up, we go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you walked in, I was kind of embarrassed because our hats are um, are very similar here. Mm-hmm. You know, when I wear this hat and my other hats, people tell me I look like Bear Reinhardt from Need to Breathe. Nice. And my response is no. Bear Reinhardt <laughs> looks like me. Okay. That's the- <laughs> I get you. You're the originator. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not actually. But I, I kind of feel like every time I see you, you're wearing a, a new hat. I have a bunch of hats, too. Like, that's my thing. That's what I spend my money on. Yeah, right? I have is a little that... bit of a hat problem. Yeah, um, me too. Um, I actually have a hat lady who oh, like, helps make you've my You've taken it up enough. It's insane. Yeah. Um, but I love them. And it's kind of my thing. That's I think right. that's how people kind of know when we come on stage who we are. Oh, absolutely. Like, every photo, every mm-hmm. record, every show, I'm seeing you in a different hat. I don't yeah, know if I could pull that one off. It's a little bit large. Yeah. It looks weird in the <laughs> it looks weird in the hardware store in the mornings. No. Um, but. no, it's great. It's great, man. So last time you were here, we talked about uh, DC Talk being an influence and how you rapped Heaven Bound as huh. a kid in church. Do you remember re- recreating remember, that a little bit? I do. You don't know this yet, but soon after that interview, Toby Mac came in and I played that for him. And I got his reaction. <laughs> I was going to play it for you, <laughs> okay. his reaction, okay? So right. first, here is Bear and the rest of the guys in Need to Breathe rapping Heaven Bound, and then afterwards is Toby's reaction. That's amazing. Need to breathe was inspired by DC Talk. That's amazing, amazing. Like, I had no idea. Like, they're always super nice to me. Maybe that's why. (laughs) They're always like, what's up, man? Giving me hugs. And they did wonder why they weren't invited on the cruise. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was. Yeah. 
I should have brought them on the cruise. <laughs> Would, the question is, will they do Heaven Bound if they come on the cruise? Because we can work something out. Now, when I did that interview with Toby, it was before the first cruise. There is another cruise happening. So I'm trying to I'm get you on the cruise, bro. Yeah, like, I hear that. You and the I band, appreciate that. We you need can be that. on the cruise. We need to so that. if you were, would you do have a bound oh, with no DC Tom? No question. No yeah. question. <laughs> no doubt? Yeah, no doubt. That'd be a dream. That's awesome. Yeah, because you guys did it. What, how old were you when you did that first time? I was time? 10 years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you probably need some practice to, to get all the... Oh, uh, we're ready. Are you ready yeah, to go? I still got okay. the moves, dude. <laughs> you ready to go? <laughs> all right. All right. Um, Let's talk about your charity for a little bit, because this is really awesome what you guys are doing in Nicaragua. You've raised over $2 million, and now you're planning a second center, right? Yeah, we actually just opened the second one. Um, oh, it's already so, open. Yeah. Great. So we have two medical clinics. Um, they're staffed by people that live there. They run on their own. Um, and most of this money has been raised through the fans, the band, which is absolutely crazy. Something we're really proud of. Yeah. Um, you know, we do a dollar a ticket from the shows when people come a golf tournament every year. Toby is actually was at our golf tournament this year. And he's um, pretty good. Like he is a legit. real good golfer. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's, it's been awesome to kind of see the fans get behind it. You know, we try to not annoy them with it, you know, <laughs> yeah. but they're going on trips and they take medical professionals four times a year over there. That's cool. They do trips in Uganda as well. So we're planning a clinic in Uganda next. That's incredible, man. That's yeah. incredible. And last time you were here, I think Seth mentioned that one clinic can serve like a hundred thousand people. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you think about like a, like a community is really where we're putting these, and um, and people come from a long way away. Yeah. And so when they go on the trips, the four you know times a year, they go out in the in the villages around where that is, mm-hmm. and then sort of refer back to it and keep great records. And they have like you know on Monday the cardiologist comes, and on Tuesday that's you know, incredible, that's insane. So. That's incredible. And the fans of Need to Breathe made those things happen, right? Yeah, and that's easily, the I think, the proudest moment we've ever had is going yeah. there and like cutting the ribbon for a place that's like going to be there much longer than our music will or you know us even. So we're coming out of summer, and I know like as a musician, you travel all around the world, and you, you play, and you see a lot of different cities, but... What do you do for vacation? Like, what does what does your family do to get away? Um, or do you get away? Or you just yeah, stay home? No, we do. I, I'm a big fan of the friend uh, trips. Okay. So we kind of go out like couples, like we make a make a week of it. But yeah, it depends, man. My, my wife is super into the beach. I want to go somewhere where I, where I don't have to do anything. Yeah, right, right. That's my <laughs> After being on the road, too, I'm right? like, man, yeah. I'm just ready to eat. She's super into activities, so we kind of have to balance that out. Right? <laughs> And you got kids, right? You got uh, what, a three year old and like a ten month old? Is that I right? I do. Yeah. So are you doing like the Disney Worlds and stuff yet? Not yet. No? Not yet. No, it'd be pure insanity. But they are <laughs> they are awesome two boys, and they're both absolutely nuts and wild. And yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a lot of fun. But our day starts at six a.m. and and That's you know nuts. With, yeah, it's insane. Yeah. So last time you were here, you were talking about your son, and you were you were saying how Bo's kids were like. Telling him like, "Daddy, don't leave," and your kids weren't quite that old yet. Yeah. So, is your son there yet? Is it I'm making starting, it harder to I'm, leave it now? Is, it, it does make it harder. Yeah. Um, my son is like, he doesn't want me to leave when he's going to sleep. He's like, "Just sleep up here with me, Dad." Oh. You know that kind of thing. So it's like it doesn't matter if you're in another room or you're going to another state. You know, you want to be around your kids a lot, and yeah, you know, that makes it tough. We're I think our schedules are much better. We're, our band is much more focused on that, mm-hmm. you know, than we used to be. Um, and so it's been awesome. And our kids love coming to sound check and that whole thing. I mean, we let them roll around and they get on the big video screens for the tour and all that. It's, they, I mean, they love being around it. So you do get to bring your family out a lot when, yeah. you, when you travel. Yeah. A lot more. It's just, that just brings a whole balance to everything. Yeah. You know I mean, it used to be shows felt like life and death in some ways. Obviously they're not, but right. Right. But when kids are around, it makes it But that was clear. a pivotal point for you guys. Like there was a point where you were like, you know, you had to figure that out cause you're on the road, what, 200 days a year. And yeah. That's tough and it's on like anybody else. It's like you have to enjoy work. You got to enjoy the present, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's what we had to figure out how to do, and not just think about like where what does this show mean for us tomorrow, you know. Mm-hmm. And so we're having a good time with it. Well, Bear, thanks for being here, man. I'm so grateful for your time. Thanks for talking about this new record. Thanks for making incredible music that I legitimately can jam out to. Like, yeah, thanks, brother. Seriously, you get kind of jaded sometimes in this music industry, and you think you hear a great song, or you, but you legitimately make great music. And thanks, I'm, man. I'm I'm thankful for your time today. I appreciate that.